you fall probably hurt the sentence that you should break as late as possible for any corner you're really approaching. This is not only not helping, it's in fact incredibly bad advice and it might even hold you back to improve your lap time. So what this video is going to do, talk you through the reasons for that. And second, we're going to do, go through the process of actually defining the correct breaking point in this video. And it's probably something you didn't expect, so make sure you watch to the end. The main problem with this tip of breaking as late as possible is what do they actually mean? What does it mean to break as late as possible? Not crash into the wall? Not stay on the track at all? Avoid an enemy or pass one? What are we actually trying to achieve with as late as possible on the break? The problem is, and that's why I'm so much about or so much on the fence about this statement, is that once you are too late on the break in particular, there's really no coming back. This is an error you'll never have a chance to correct in that corner. So what you get is you probably have too high entry speed. You'll probably turn in too late or too early to correct that. Your line, therefore, is not going to be correct. The attitude of the car is not going to be too correct. And therefore, it is not rotating the amount you're hoping to rotate. And that means your minimum speed is probably in the wrong place. And the worst part of it all is your exit speed is going to be too low. I could probably make that list longer, but we'll stop it here. I, in fact, often have that in coachings that I keep looking at the data with everybody. And then we just decide, you know what? Let's start by breaking a tiny bit earlier and work from there because there are so many other problems that follow in the aftermath of breaking too late. And... So now we want to talk about a little where this mistake actually actually comes from. And it is often just a misconception pretty much from the start of your sim racing. So how do we get to this point of everybody breaking too late, essentially? A, or one, a fast driver, but a bad coach, has probably told you personally or in a track guide or wherever, in this corner, break as late as possible without really explaining what that means. So basically, you're still sitting there clueless what to actually aim for by following as late as possible and what a good breakpoint might actually be. Second, you, you watch hot lab videos and you just kind of try to slam the brake whenever the pro driver doing the hot lab slammed the brake. Also, there's a lot of hot laps out there that are not particularly good and you shouldn't copy even if the times are faster than yours. The problem in these hot laps is perspective. With a different field of view or with a slightly different cockpit view or with the virtual seat in the car just shifting position, it can pretty much distort the impression and already mislead you because on your screen it actually looks different. Sometimes... In a track guide, you will often have a fast driver themselves not even knowing their braking point, which you can often see by them saying, well, you know, brake at the 100 meter board. But if you actually zoom out, change perspective, go to a different camera, what you're going to see is it's actually 110 meters. So it is really, really tricky to follow that advice when it's given wrong, but still gives you the impression of being right. So just, just can't work, right? Another factor can be that you're simply frustrated. That will be number three. And you're trying to improve and you're trying to squeeze lap time out of the car by entering the corners really fast, aggressive. And you're really losing kind of the overview of where your time is actually lost, which is down to you not having a reference available, especially in ACC. We can't load somebody else's delta. We only have our own. So there's not really a good way to compare in the first place where you should be gaining and losing time. And then there's the fourth part. It is very hard to know if you are actually too late or too early or if you're doing it already perfectly fine and you actually have different issues. But we'll get to that and data is certainly going to play a part in it. So let's talk about actually finding the correct breaking point and the first thing we have to do for that is acknowledge that we need to change perspective because we have a wrong one. Every beginner, 
advanced drivers. Even occasionally professional drivers will have the issue that they fall for the trap of trying to find lap time where it's not available. And it's typically a perspective of, you know, everybody can drive the straight. That's easy. I just go flat out. I keep the wheel straight. There's nothing I can gain here. And you're thinking, well, everything is probably in the corners. This is where the skill at. This is where I need to improve. So let me stop you right there. You're only partly right. So with that perspective, you'll naturally be very aggressive into the corners and actually try to be as late as possible on the break, whatever that means. And more likely, more often than not, you'll actually be too quick, too late on the break into the corners. And that's going to have a lot of issues down the path. So you'll be aggressive, you'll rest the car around, you're probably thinking only corner by corner. And uh, by the end of the corner or by the end of a section of several corners, you're happy it's kind of over, but you're not really sure was it good, was it bad, how much did I lose, how much did I gain, and where did I lose and did I gain. But I can tell you it is 90% or even off more often, it's the exit of the corner where you're losing it. And why is that? In fact, when you're breaking too late, you will go deep into the corner, you will then therefore lose the option to really make a choice where you position your car and eventually you'll have a bad angle for the exit or simply you'll need to long too late into the corner to actually uh, slow the car down and as a result you'll also put the power down too late because it takes forever to rotate the car around and then you're easily even if it's just a few kilometers down on exit compared to an actual fast driver and now the problem is you will keep losing time for the entire straight after the corner if you're say 10 kilometers down which is very very quickly done you will keep part of that disadvantage for the entire straight so initially we were 10 kilometers eight five three two but it's never going to get back to zero so you see your delta rise for the entirety of the straight. So let's try and change that perspective a little. What we want to achieve is that we want to be fast on the track where we're spending the most time, where there's the biggest uh, distance to cover on the track and combine it all, separate the track apart by corners and straights, you'll quickly notice that actually the majority of time, the majority of distance around the lap will be going straight. So what we need to achieve is being fast on these straights. And that can often mean actually being a tiny bit slower in the corners. And you can already kind of tell where I'm going with this and why I want you to break a tiny bit earlier. So what we want to think about when trying to define the actual breaking point for a corner, we have to start at the end of a section or the end of a corner and actually see how long is the straight afterwards and how important is the straight going to be compared to the corner. And that often tells you, and let me give it to you straight away, there's very rarely a straight that does not justify focusing on it. So what we want to focus that on in our entire driving, especially in ACC with how limited the grip is and how the game works in general, we want to focus entirely on good corner exit speed. So what this means for the initial statement of breaking as late as possible is to actually change the statement as follows. Break as late as possible in order to exit the corner as quick as possible. And now suddenly we have quite a different target to work towards. And I really want you to enshrine that in your head, maybe print it out, hang it on your wall, above your screen, I don't care. But this is the single most important advice you'll get from anyone in sim racing, full stop. So how do we apply this new approach of focusing entirely on corner exit speed? It differs a bit per corner type, whether or not it's a long, tight, wide corner and all that if it's multiple corners connected together but we'll go through that in a second a great way to actually compare this and knowing if you're doing this right and we i showed you earlier how 
hot lab onboards can be a bit misleading is by taking a step back and looking at the data. For example, with our own tool on popometer.io, which really highlights the problem without any question being asked. It's just right there, okay? So let me show you our recorded data earlier. What this means in practice then, when we have a couple different corner types, we won't go through all of them because there's like every corner is ever so slightly different, but just get a brief or rough overview. There are single corners where there's no corner before, there's no corner after, just coming from a straight, ending on a straight. That say are up to 90 degrees. These corners typically have the apex in the middle of the turn. So this is where you are the tightest and you will have to be on power. And that's the crucial bit before clipping that apex. And if you just think really quickly of all the driving that you do, are you on throttle before the apex or after? So if your answer is after, you probably want to right get into the data and confirm and maybe work on that. And you're probably a victim of breaking too late. If the corner gets well longer or covers up to 180 degrees, it becomes much more likely you will do a double apex approach. So there's, for example, the Dunlop corner on Nürburgring, or actually also the last corner on Nürburgring, which is similar, but not quite, where you don't have a double apex, but a single late apex. In these corners, your throttle application should actually start pretty much in the middle of the corner between the two apexes, or just before the late apex as well. Usually you're also coming from a wide position there. You're not tight already. You're, that's what the apex kind of says, right? Second apex means before that you're not tight. And then we have the situation of several connected corners where one depends on the other. And there it is. The key information you got to take away here is that you're not looking for the exit of each corner you are looking for the exit of the last corner of these one, two, three, four, five that are connected. So the best compromise for these sections often is to focus on the straight that comes after the last corner of a few connected corners, which means you'll have to do a few compromises before. So actually breaking too late in the first of say a series of three corners can sacrifice your entire section. All right, what are the key takeaways here then? First, corner exits are much more important than fast corner entries because it's on the exits where you actually lose most of your lap time and for the entire straight afterwards. How can you know? Well, Whenever you feel like you have to wait with accelerating the car, and I don't just mean going on the throttle, you can be on throttle without accelerating. Whenever you find yourself waiting or having to wait with acceleration until after the apex or until after a second apex in corners where it applies, you likely need to change something before that. Sometimes it might just be the line, but in most cases, I'm pretty sure it will be down to too late and too aggressive braking, too deep into the turn, taking too long to slow the car down, and that compromises everything. And that's probably because someone gave you bad advice. What you should probably do is, and if you feel like you really want to make sure and know, just go to popometer.io where you can check some data quite easily. As I've showed you earlier, it quickly highlights the apex in the corner. It highlights your slowest point in the corner without really understanding anything of the data. The information is just right there. As soon as you go into the comparison with a faster lap time, you will quickly know if you make this error or not. If you feel this video was helpful, consider subscribing, but definitely give it a like because I guess we should have more people see this shared with your friends and maybe not with your enemies. But uh, thank you all for watching and we'll see you very soon. Bye.